power stage has a new emperor. A fusion of Colorado tech, Australian dexterity, and a Japanese powerhouse. It never used to be that way. Not so very long ago, having a Shimano motor on a power stage was a bit like having a very high golf handicap. Such was its weakness on big, nasty, steep climbs. However, over the last two years, the boffins, sorry, engineers, from the land of the rising sun have embarked on giving their motor the ability to ascend as well, if not better, than everyone else's. And it has been accomplished in a humble manner. This then is the story of Shimano's successful rise to the top of the world. The story begins in the spring of 2016 when Shimano launched the original E8000 drive unit. It was restrained rather than rowdy, its design and manner about ergonomics rather than exuberance. It was never going to win a power stage, but then again, it was never designed to. But of course, power stages never existed back in the day. But in 2018, an EMTB race test event was held in Finale. It's two days of riding and racing through the hills behind us to find out just what's going to take to bring EMTBs onto the racetrack. Even though this event was said to focus on bike performance, trail design and development, the days of EMTB being solely a leisure activity seemed to be numbered. And that number being torque and peak power. Bosch being the kings had already plans afoot to be the dominant force. Germany was going after gold with one of the greatest races of all time behind the bar. A few years later, Nico Volias became the king of the e Enduro World Series. Four years later, Shimano launched the eagerly awaited EP8 unit. And even though it had improved in many ways, was still a bit of an introvert in a crowded uphill space. Having said that, it was a motor we'd ridden in some incredibly tough and technical places. In the right hands, capable of some ludicrous moves. Working in harmony with good bike design, we've never felt the need for more power, choosing instead to eke the most out of what we had. Evolution and progression, however, had different ideas. And what was to follow from Osaka was nothing short of astonishing. A technological advance in MTB that was to prove to be one of the greatest in over three decades, changing the way many of us ride EMTBs in the process. Auto shift. With EMTB now a sport, reputations were suddenly at stake. Behind the scenes, some brands were designing motors with the sole aim of winning the showpiece power stages at Enduro World Series. So whilst EP8 was a great motor, speed still mattered. Mr. Shimano, uh, President, he uh, asked us to come to the EDR e race to win the race. Yet he had been designing an EMTB with a specific aim to go racing. The results, however, were far from what Yeti were hoping for. Tough day on the Swiss stages ended with a mechanical for the Yeti one up rider. Power stage, Jared Graves gets out there and within 50 yards is off the bike and looking for the walk mode. I decided to crash and uh... Definitely a relearning experience on the very European style trails there, so mm -hmm. just feel very rusty at the moment. And e bikes is a whole new game, so just learning. But the aim was clear they wanted to win. But who says? <laughs> to 2019 or 2020, uh, we have an uh, E8000 DU, but uh, already race started, but we lose the race. <laughs> then we want to do something uh, next for the uh, future decided, uh, had a decision to come to the race. 
In the off-season, Shimano enter the game and the EP8 racing program begins. Winning matters. The technicians were sent in to sort it all out. <laughs> uh, kind of in, uh, at the end of 2021, we made the decision that we were going to go start racing. So we went looking for a team to partner with. And then in uh, 2022, the racing got underway. What was it called? Uh, it became called the Yeti Shimano EP Racing Program. Kind of a test program in between races and then race day comes around and we focus on racing. At every race we've had somebody from Japan who's kind of a constant fi figure but we've got engineers that are coming in and out and working on different projects so we might have the auto shift engineer or the assist algorithm engineer or a drive unit engineer or a derailleur engineer. Today is a practice day, and the first day is five, so very uh, technical, up and down, up and down. The gnarliest one of the year, probably by far, and like there's some big, some big power moves that'll pay off if you can make them, so uh, be interesting to see how we roll the dice. There's an insane trials rock inside the line down there. If you do it, you're going to make a lot of time, but like, it's a bit of a dice roll. Um, go have a look at it now, but it could be fun. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be quicker if you can do it, if you don't die on the logs beforehand. So, I'm not going to do it. It's too scary for me. <laughs> Carry speed, basically. It seems like that's the difference between a top five run and a first place run, is being able to connect everything. So I guess I'm looking at uh, how the bike is performing, like where are people messing up? Could the bike help? And uh, are they able to connect one thing to the next and use the bike as a tool to do that? A good clean line to start with. And then if there's a couple of other more risky options, just to kind of weigh up, can I do it smooth? Is it worth the risk? And how much time is it going to save? Just taking time to get to know it all and remember everything on the course. With Graves otherwise engaged, or licking his wounds, Mick Hanna signs. He's an ex-World Cup Pro downhill racer. It begins well. Top five on all stages at the Scottish opener, even a win in one. But results show 25th on the power stage. Yeah, so back in Scotland was the first, well, first EDR, EEDR in 22. I was losing like 20 to 40 seconds a stage on the power stages. Same race, the technicians from Osaka roll into town. There are many things to tackle, the first one being power. To this point, the Yeti race bike has no podiums and way off the power stage, just way off. We're trying to make it feel like the mountain biker's drive unit. And so when people say it didn't feel like it was powerful enough, we're like, it's kind of the point. Like, it feels like you're the one doing the work. And so no surprise that it wasn't doing well on power stages, like we didn't make it to do that. Yeah, you'd think that three-minute sprint would be harder than the one-minute sprint, but <laughs> um, turns out climbing is a little bit of a challenge. <laughs> yeah. Morning, let's go. <laughs> yeah, a big part of the program and what I've had to learn and not the auto shift and free shift technologies. In the beginning, I was kind of like, oh, that's a cool idea, but, but I actually use auto shift. During the season, the team are introduced to other technology. Auto shift 
is one of them, and FreeShift another. The EP801 drive unit prototype is introduced. We see that the motor is but one part of the story. Racing EMTB is a complex business. Mick is taking a while with many aspects. During the races, auto shift while coasting, the part of the technology that enables that is free shift, which also, when you're manually shifting, that's super helpful as well. That's kind of, it's actually something I've dreamed of having in downhill for years. 2022 is an incredibly busy year for the Shimano technicians, but the aims are very clear. Developing the best manageable drive unit and creating durable components for the race scene. And all this with an eye on using this experience in e-racing for the development of future e-bike products. Richie Roode was keeping the pressure on at the front. He won on stage seven ahead of Giant Factory Racing's Josh Carson. Richie wanted an e-bike for training and that was kind of a big part of it. He had been on the EPA motor and knew what it was like at the beginning and it worked for him. It culminates with Richie Roode jumping on the Yeti and taking a podium with three stage wins, but still not yet a power stage win, with the Shimano still many, many seconds behind. We didn't have the motor that would compete against the other brands, uh, but Shimano stepped up to the table really big and we outlined this program and what we needed and they, you know, delivered. And so to 2023. It was Ryan Gilchrist who drew first blood, taking the stage one win in the men's race. Shimano had made it, and with Gilchrist and the Yeti team, finally conquering the elusive technical and often horrible power stage. I was looking for another rider and somebody that would, you know, work within our team. I could see from our test camps that we had done previously that he was a very powerful rider with great balance and coordination, and some of the stuff that he could make the bike do was just shocking. Gilchrist's two back-to-back -back power stage wins at Ludenville, proving Shimano very much back in the business yeah. of power climbing. First racing finale, I wasn't too sure how it was going to go, and I came in second. I was 0.8 off the win, so immediately I just got hungry and turned myself into an 80 kilo power stage specialist. In Ludenville, we uh, struck gold and got you know, back to back, one, two on the same days. And so in the exacting and often punishing world of racing, Shimano had developed not just a fast motor, but one that had the strength and endurance to go the distance. One which would live in time and space outside the race circuit. And so to the season's end at Chattel. It's going to be a good one. Beautiful day, bright and early. We're up at five, we're out at seven. Wouldn't want it any other way. But Yeti on a pretty good day today regardless, so uh, happy to end on a high note. Sick Mick on stage. The legend. Oh, just a good day riding bikes, isn't it? We're in a beautiful place and the course looks amazing. To go from where we were at the beginning of last year to being more than competitive this year is like just awesome to see and be a part of. Good one in there, a couple yeah. shockers, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, not bad. Damage control, lots of foot out slaps. Plan of attack. Um, I've been, I mean, I haven't really made too many mistakes today, just like up the pace and track suit me a little bit more towards the tail end, so yep. just rally the end of it and yeah.
Mick, not a bad year in the end? No, it's a great year. I've enjoyed it. Um, today was a good solid day. The last two rounds I made a big mistakes during the race and I just wanted to have a solid one today. And it's kind of like painfully top five every run. I feel like I was like somewhere around fifth every run, but finished in the top five overall and that's amazing. Two tenths off winning the first power stage. And three tenths off the second one. <laughs> so maybe combined time, the fastest combined power stage climbing. The racing moves on, the challenges of EMTB's future advancing fast on both a hardware level and an event level. The rider skills honed to EMTB are also accelerating fast, but Shimano have proved they are hungry for much, much more. Do you think Mr. Shimano is happy? I think so. <laughs> I believe so.